Hi everyone. Today we are going to be taking a look at how I recreated the anomaly effect from the TV show Primeval in uh, Blender, which you might have seen in my recent video. I'm just going to be covering how to create the actual anomaly effect itself. Uh, I'm not going to be going over camera tracking or anything like that because there, there are plenty of tutorials on that out there already. Um, and if you know how to do it, it's fairly straightforward to kind of integrate this into your scene. The anomaly effect can kind of be broken down into three main elements, um, which we're going to be tackling separately. Uh, there's these kind of obvious glass shards uh, sort of rotating and, and moving about and looking quite kind of chaotic and they're reflective and they, they kind of distort the background as if they were made of glass. And uh, then there's the core, which is this, this sort of glowing volume in the center of the anomaly, uh, which we're gonna be using a, a volumetric uh, object to create. And uh, then if you look quite closely, there are some little small particles that move in and out and sort of emit from the center of the anomaly and then kind of fall back into it, which, which add a little bit more interest. It's quite a simple effect to create. Most of the kind of nuance of it is in the compositor. So we're gonna be spending quite a lot of time in compositing, trying to capture what the effect looks like. Um, there's lots of different layers that we need to bring together. So the first thing we're gonna do when we jump into Blender is uh, we'll just delete everything to start off with. And then I'm gonna change the render engine from EV to Cycles because we're gonna be making use of some features that uh, only Cycles has. You could get a decent approximation of this effect in EV if you wanted to, but honestly, none of it takes that long to render anyway because we're just using emissive uh, volumes and a really simple kind of reflective shader. So um, render times aren't gonna be much of an issue. So the first thing we're going to work on are the shards. So to do that, we are going to add an icosphere and I'm just going to add another level of subdivision. And uh, what we're going to do with this is we're going to use the explode modifier and a particle system to shatter it basically. And the reason I've chosen an icosphere is because it's already made up of these little triangular faces. So uh, we won't get any quads blowing out of it. It's already kind of giving us that sort of shard shape for free. In the particle settings, I'm going to add a new particles uh, system. We basically want an explosion. So I'm going to set the start frame to one and the end frame to five. And this just means that all of these 1000 particles are going to be emitted on the first five frames. So if you press play now, you can see a whole bunch of particles are emitted and they just fall straight down. So we want them to fly out kind of equally. So I'm going to turn the gravity all the way down. And if we go back to the first frame and press play, you can see we have all these particles being emitted and just kind of drifting off. Uh, now this is looking a bit too uniform. So what we can do is in the physics. So what we can do is in the velocity tab, we can just add some random velocity and I might actually bring the normal velocity down a bit. And we'll see how that looks. So that's looking nice. To get a, a better idea of um, how this will look, in the viewport display, we can just set display as to none. And then in the modifiers tab, we will just add an explode modifier. And I'm going to hit cut edges because then, uh, as well as just separating the faces out, it will actually cut along some edges and create some more irregular looking shapes. So if we go back to the first frame, play again we can see we've got this nice sort of cloud of particles coming off it. Um, and the only other thing I'm gonna do in the particles is we're gonna give it a bit of rotation, just so that these end up in more kind of random orientations. So I will check dynamic, and then I will give it a little bit of random angular velocity. It doesn't really matter what this looks like in motion, all we're interested in is the final result. So there we go. And that's looking pretty good to me. So we can head back to the modifiers tab and just apply this modifier. And then we can remove the particle system. Um, but the issue we have now is all of these sort of shards, they're, they're looking a bit too complicated. If we jump back to our reference image, you can see these are all sort of triangular, quite simple shapes. So to remedy this, we can actually use the decimate modifier and just drag that down. And this is just gonna remove a certain proportion of vertices. And what that 
has the effect of doing is creating all these nice triangular shapes. So we, we can bring this down about there looks nice. We don't want all of them to be perfect triangles because we, we want to get some of this more irregular sort of crystal shard looking structure going on. But th that looks good to me. So what we can then do is we can actually use the cast modifier. Just give it a little bit of negative value and that's just going to distort the edges a little bit. We don't want to do it too much or we end up with this sort of thing happening. But it, it's just going to twist it a little bit in the middle so we get some uh, slightly more elongated shapes. What we can also do is use a smooth modifier to actually change the size of the individual shards and you can even just invert them fully if you want to. So I'm just going to pull this down a bit and, and make the shards a little bit bigger. And then I'm going to use the solidify modifier to give them a bit of thickness. This is just going to give them edges so that um, as, as they rotate, they're going to catch the light and uh, they're not just going to look completely two dimensional. Um, I might thicken them up just a little bit more. And then I'm going to add the bevel modifier just to soften those edges a little bit more. So this is basically how we're going to create our shard layer. At the moment, it's looking a little bit um, empty. So I can just duplicate this a couple of times, rotate it randomly. Um, maybe I'll change the size of these a bit, make them a bit bigger. Maybe I'll, I'll scale it in and just duplicate it a couple of times. Adjust the settings, get a nice variation, a nice distribution of uh, different sized shards. And that looks pretty good to me. So the next thing we can do is if I just split the workspace is we are going to add a shader for this. Now, all we want is a metallic, very shiny material that's just going to reflect our environment when we put it in. We're not going to bother with the glass shader or refractive shader or anything like that. Nothing that's going to make these render times longer. We just want a nice shiny metallic shader because we're just going to take those reflections and add them on top of our footage. Um, and then we're going to do the, the kind of refractive part of it in post-processing. So just grab one of these shard objects and in the shader workspace, add new. And we're just going to drag metallic all the way up. And then we're going to bring the roughness down. We don't want it to come down all the way, but... 0.075 will probably do quite nicely. And then back in our 3D viewport, to apply it to all, just hit A, and then we can do Control L, Materials. That's just gonna link all the materials to what we have selected. So now if we go to the shaded view, what we have is a lot of gray shards, and that's because these are completely reflective and they've got nothing to reflect except for our gray world background. So what I'm gonna do, is in the world settings, just load up an environment texture and I've just got this one that I, I like to use a lot, it works quite nicely, but any HDRI that's going to give you some nice kind of hot spots and some nice contrast uh, will work fine. I'm just going to increase the strength of it and then so we can see things a bit easier in the film settings, I'm just going to turn on transparent. So there we go. The only other thing I'm going to do with these shards is I'm going to use the bevel node in here. We can use input bevel. I'm just going to plug the normal of that into our BSDF normal input. And that's just going to round out the edges even more and smooth things out a bit, um, which is going to really help our refraction. And it's going to help kind of pick up the highlights and the edges of these shards, even when they're not directly kind of facing something that's going to make them reflective and make them a bit more visible. Um, otherwise they can just kind of seem like they're just fading out into nothing. But that's where we're going to leave it for the shards for the time being because they're all set up and ready to go. Um, so I'm just going to name this collection shards. I'm going to name this view layer shards and then I'm going to add a new collection and we're going to call this core. And the next thing we're going to work on is the glowing core. I'm going to add a UV sphere this time and in edit mode I'm just going to scale it up to about there. We don't want it to sort of encompass the whole anomaly. What we're effectively doing here is creating a domain in which our volume is going to be rendered. So we'll add a new shader here. I'm just going to call this core and we're going to get rid of that and we're just going to grab a 
emission shader and plug that straight into the volume. And if we go to rendered mode now, you can see what that's doing is it's basically filling up the volume of this shape of this object with an emissive shader. Um, but at the moment, it just looks like a sphere. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a gradient texture, a spherical gradient texture um, to limit and create kind of a nice soft fall off from the middle. So if I grab a gradient texture and plug it in, you can see we've got a gradient kind of coming in from the side here. We can change this mode to spherical. And at the moment, we don't have any texture coordinates set. So it's trying to apply this to the, the UV map of the UV sphere, which doesn't really work for volume. So we can just grab texture coordinates, object, plug that in. And you can see we've got a tiny little gradient in the middle. So to adjust the size of that, I'm going to grab a vector mapping node. And we actually want to scale this down a bit, paradoxically. So I'll set that to about 0.3. Uh, maybe 0.35 and you can see now we've got this nice sort of soft fall off and what we can then do is grab a color ramp and then we have complete control over this gradient so the anomalies are kind of have this kind of red light and then a, a sort of yellowy golden color in the middle and I'm just going to increase the strength of that change this to ease maybe for a nice some softer blending and we can just adjust this to our liking I'm going to pull the saturation up a bit I'm also going to add just pure white at the center Now, this is a good start, but at the moment it's looking very kind of regular. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring in a noise texture that we are going to use to um, add some kind of distortion to this gradient so it looks less kind of precise and less clean. So I'm just going to plug this directly into the volume so we can see what the texture is doing. And I'm also just going to give this object coordinates as well. And while we're at it, we're going to change this from a three-dimensional texture to a four-dimensional texture, which gives us this extra W value, which we can actually animate, and that will evolve the texture over time. So that, that will make it look a bit less static when we animate it. So if I grab another color ramp, we can start to see what this is doing. We want this to be quite large, so I'm just going to bring the scale down. Maybe a bit more than that. Bring the detail up. And maybe bring the roughness up a bit as well. And then what we're going to do is we're going to bring this before our color ramp. And then we're going to use a math node to combine the factor from the gradient and the factor from the color ramp. So I'll just plug that in down there and we are going to choose subtract. Plug this into the emission color and plug that into the volume. And I'll bring the strength back up again. And you can see that sort of distorted our nice precise gradient and made it look a little bit more random, a little bit, bit more chaotic, which is exactly what we're looking for. And I may just adjust this a bit more to compensate. And that is now looking pretty good. So while we're at it, I'm just going to clean up our naming so we know what's what. And we're now going to move on to creating the particle system. So I'm going to create a collection called particles. And I'm also going to create a collection called instances because we're going to be instancing some objects um, to create our particles. So I'm just going to hide the core for the time being. I'm going to add another UV sphere in particles. And we are going to give it a particle system. And once again, down in the physics, we're going to turn gravity all the way off. And in the source settings, we're going to emit from the volume. We're once again going to give a random velocity and I'm going to turn on rotation 
turn on dynamic. Um, and I'm also going to actually bring the number of particles down to 500 and start it at frame negative 150 and increase the lifespan to 150. And what that does is it means that on frame one, we will already have particles that have completed one entire lifetime. So um, you won't have this effect of the particles kind of appearing on frame one and, and them not being already kind of part of um, the image initially. So if we come to our cache here, I'll just bake that. Bakes really quickly because there's really few particles. And what we've got at the moment is all of these particles flying off into nothing. But the effect we kind of want is these particles to sort of come out, slow down, and then almost like they're falling back in to the middle of the anomaly. So to accomplish that, I'm going to use a force field. So we're going to use a force. And I'm just going to set the strength in the physics settings to negative one. And if we delete our bake and bake it again, you can see we've got particles coming out and falling back in. But they're not coming out far enough. So I need to increase their initial velocity to compensate for the, the force that's pulling them in. So I'm going to do that by increasing the random velocity. And we'll just bake once again. And this is about what I'm looking for. But now we need to replace these sort of sphere halo kind of things with our um, shards or smaller shards anyway. In our instances collection, I'm just going to add a circle and we're just going to give this six vertices. I'm going to drag it up and then we're going to merge this at the center. And in fact, I'm, I'm just going to scale it in on the X and Y axes, make it this really narrow kind of needle looking thing. I'm going to call this shard particle. So we can just hide the instances for now and in our particles render settings, we can change this from halo to object. And our instance object is going to be shard particle. Now you can see we've got these shards coming out, but they're oriented the wrong way. So if we bring this back and change our rotation center to the 3D cursor, I can grab these particles and I can just rotate them negative 90 degrees. And I'm also going to pull it back a little bit so the center of rotation is in the right place. We can hide that again. And you can see that's working perfectly. They're a little too big at the moment. So in the render settings, I'll bring this down to 0.03. And I'm just going to give them some random variation as well. Now, if we, if we want to make this look even more kind of random, I can add just a simple turbulence force. And if we delete the bake and rebake it again, you can see that's looking great. So now what we need to do is set up the material for our little particles. So I'm going to hide the shards and I'm just going to bring back this instances tab. And while I think of it in the render settings, I'm just going to uncheck show emitter because we don't want this sphere to render. Um, so I will create a new material and I'm just going to call it particle. And we're going to delete the principal shader and once again, just use an emissive shader. In the surface but what we want to do is we want to have these particles fade in after they spawn come out and then gradually fade out again so we don't have a moment where they are sort of suddenly blipping in and out of existence so to do that we are going to make use of our particle info tab here so if i grab a color ramp and i take the age value plug it into the factor and plug that into the surface. And then we go to rendered view. This instance is gonna render as black because it's not a particle, but all of these instances you can see are rendering white. And that's because they all have an age of over one. So the color is being set to a value of one. Now we know that our maximum particle lifespan is 150 frames. So I'm gonna grab a map range node and plug it in and what we can do is we can map put 150 in the maximum here and now what we have got is every particle is being shaded between black and white depending on how old it is between 0 and 150 frames so you can see how we can use this 
to effectively create a mask to gradually fade in and out these particles. So I'm just going to add another socket in this color ramp here, set that to white, and then I'm going to set this to black. So now what should be happening is our particles will be going from black to white and then to black again. And I can just sort of harden up that effect just with a couple of more handles here because we, we want them most of the time to just be visible. The way we're going to do this is we're going to grab a mix shader and we're going to plug this into the factor value. Plug emission into our bottom slot and then grab a transparent shader and plug that into our first slot. So now we have exactly what we want, which is our, our particles sort of fading into existence and then gradually fading out. And that is now pretty much everything we're going to be actually modeling in Blender done. Um, so all we need to do now is actually set up our render layers. So at the moment we are on the shards render layer. So we just want these shards to be rendering. I'm just going to unhide everything. We can collapse these groups. And in the this filter tab here, I'm just going to turn on these options, which are going to allow us to affect the render visibility of each collection. So shards we can leave as is, but what we want to get is we want to get this the indirect reflection of this core here. Now, for some reason, there's some slightly strange bug with Blender where volumetrics don't quite work with the indirect only um, settings. So I'm just going to unhide this and show you what I mean. Um, what I should be able to do is just check this little kind of bounced arrow here and get only the indirect light. But you can see that's only sort of applying out here. We should be getting lots of indirect reflection right in the center of this volume. But luckily there is a way around it. But what I'm going to do is duplicate this collection. So now we've got two cores. I'm just going to call this core indirect. And on core one, I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to call this core indirect. And we are going to grab a light path node. And once again, we are going to grab a mixed shader and a transparent shader. I'm going to plug, plug the transparent into the second slot and grab the is camera ray socket and plug it in here. And then we're just going to, if we hide this first core layer, you can see what we're getting is the actual uh, volumetric object itself isn't visible to the camera, but it is visible indirectly to everything else it renders with. You can completely hide this core layer by unchecking this. It means it, it will not render at all and the particles layer and the instances collection. And in the render passes tab, I'm just going to turn on the normal pass because um, we're going to use this for our displacement later in the compositor. And everything else we can leave as is. I'm just going to add a new view layer entirely. We're going to call this core. And for this, we can hide everything except for the core. And we don't need to change any of the passes here, but in the overrides down here, I'm just going to set this to 10 samples because an emissive, um, an, an emissive volume like this renders super, super quickly. We do not need many samples for that at all. I'm going to add a new layer, and this time we're going to do core. I'm going to call it core mask for want of a better word. And what we want here is we want the core, but we're going to use a holdout shader, or rather the holdout option on the shards, um, so we're effectively getting the core, but with the, the shards in front of it matted out. So we can use this to create god rays kind of coming out from the center of the anomaly that will uh, kind of react to things passing in front of them, which will look quite nice. And once again, I'm just going to set the number of samples to 10. And while we're at it, I'm going to turn denoising on. And we're just going to disable denoising on this layer and I'll do the same on the, the other core layer because that's just going to slow us down, but we want it on the shards. So finally, I'm going to get the particles view layer and we can just unhide, we can just hide everything other than the particles, turn off denoising and I'll give this 20 passes because we, we might get a bit of motion blur here. And I'll turn motion blur on and adaptive sampling on.
and I'm just going to bring our number of samples down to 32 for the time being. So that's all our render layers set up. The last thing we need to do is just add a camera. So do Alt-G and Alt-R to clear the uh, default rotation and position. And then we'll just drag the camera out. And if we jump to the camera view, we can just pull it out until we get everything in frame like that. And it's just to match my background plate, I'm going to set this to a 2K image. So um, that's everything set up. We just need to hit render and um, then we'll jump into compositing. So now we have everything rendered. Um, I can just close that and go into the compositing workspace. Um, and then we just need to check use nodes at the top. And then if we control shift click, we will get a background image. Now the first thing we wanna do is to bring in our background image. Now I'm just gonna use a still from the footage that I shot previously. Um, you can see I had a light here um, just to provide some reference for the reflection on the ground. I'm not gonna be getting into um, creating that ground reflection this time. Um, we're just gonna be handling comping the anomaly in. Then I'm just gonna make sure we've got all of our render layers in here. So we'll grab the particles, we will grab the core, we've got the shards here, and then we'll grab the core mask. And basically, if you haven't used the compositor before, it's similar to the shader editor where you have all these nodes with outputs and inputs. And what gets rendered at the end is this composite node. So whatever you plug in here will uh, be executed after the rendering of each frame and uh, will be the file that gets saved unless you uh, put any file saving nodes in here that will work separately. Um, so the first thing we are going to bring in is we are going to bring in our particles. So we're going to use a mix node and we're going to set it to add because we want to add these particles on top of everything else. And we don't want them to be too strong. So I'm just going to bring that down to something like 0.4. And uh, the other thing we can do is just blur these a little bit. So I'll just use the fast Gaussian and give two pixels a blur on that. Now the next thing we're going to bring in is the core. Plug that in once again. And again, we, we don't want to bring this in too strong for the time being because we're going to be adding lots of stuff on top of this. This is almost kind of the background core, um, which is going to be visible behind uh, the shards and everything. So we don't want this to be too bright. And then what we're going to do, the next step is to displace our background. So if we, if we go here on our shards, what, what this kind of vibrantly colored sort of neon thing is, is each color, the color tells Blender which direction the geometry is facing here. So we can actually, if we grab our distort displace node, you can see we have this blue vector input here, which tells it what direction it is gonna move some pixels in. So if we plug that in there, and we plug this into our image node and then plug it into the viewer, nothing's happening at the moment, but that is because we need to basically put how many pixels we want to move things for by into these. So I'm just gonna do 20 pixels in X and Y, and you can see that has distorted our image by this amount in the direction determined by this normal path, uh, this normal socket, uh, which is quite a neat way of getting some sort of pseudo refractive effects going on without using very much kind of render time. And I'm just gonna grab our blur node here and just put it in the path of that normal. And that's just gonna soften things a little bit and we're gonna get that kind of nice sort of glass, smooth refraction kind of look. So the next thing we need to do is we need to bring our shards in. And for this, I'm going to once again use an add node. So we'll just duplicate that and plug it in. And we're just gonna bring the opacity up on this one because um, we want this to be quite strong. 
And what we're going to do is add a lens distortion node in between here. And I'm just going to check projector. And what this does is it applies whatever your distortion you add only in the horizontal axis. And I'll, I'll show you what this is doing. What we want is to create a sort of prism effect very kind of loosely, uh, like it's kind of scattering the light a bit. You can see if we go back to our reference material, you can see it's sort of here. We've got the light kind of being scattered out and being split out. So it's slightly more yellow on this side, slightly more blue on this side. Um, and that's the effect we want to try and create. So if I bring that all the way up to one, you can see what that's doing. We don't want it to go that high, but sort of 0.3 or maybe 0.5 will do us nicely. And this is going to have knock on effects sort of down the line. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a hue saturation value node and I'm just going to bring the saturation up as well. Not that high, but about 1.2 seems to work for me. So now we've got all that being added on top of our background, our particles and the background core. And the next thing we're going to add is our core mask. So this is the core with these kind of cutouts taken out of it by the shards. So if we add that in and we're going to add a bit of a blur, just quite small, about half a percent. In fact, even less than that. Now I'm going to bring the opacity of that up. And then what we're going to start doing is our light rays. If we go back to our reference, you can see we've got these sort of God rays coming out of the brightest parts of the shards and also coming out of the core. Basically what we want to do is we want to take the brightest parts of the image and then we're going to apply a sunbeams effect um, to that. To do that, we're going to get a color ramp. And at the moment, this is going to make everything black and white, but we can just bring that in a bit, bring that down. And what we're doing is creating a mask effectively. So we can then grab a mix shader we can plug in our original shards image into slot two, and we're gonna plug the out output of this color ramp into the factor node. So now it's mixing between this white gray color and uh, our image. So we're just gonna set that to black completely. I'm gonna grab this lens distortion node again, and I'm gonna plug that in beforehand. And we'll just bring it down a little bit for this one, maybe 0.35. And then we're going to go to filter sunbeams and plug this in. And we need to give it a bit of ray length and you can see what that is doing. Now, if we fiddle with this slider here, we can control better sort of where these beams are being emitted from. And once again, grabbing another add shader or rather an add node, and if we take a look at that, we've got our beams sort of emitting from our shards coming in. I can just bring the opacity down slightly more. And we're going to do pretty much exactly the same thing, but this time for the core mask. So I'll grab that. And I'll do that. And you can see nothing happens on this one. And that's because our emissive um, volume effectively has no alpha channel at all. It's just black and some beams relies on the alpha channel. So what we have to do is we have to effectively flatten this image, get rid of the, the alpha. Um, and the easiest way to do that is with the set alpha node. And we'll just use that replace alpha. And you can see there, we've just got this image against black plug that in and it works. And once again, another add node, plug that in, plug that in, let's have a look at the output. So I think we will bring the ray length down a bit on this and I'm going to bring the strength up and then I'm going to bring the strength of our core down. So that now is all of our render elements brought in and, um, doing what we want them to be doing. Um, all we need to do now is all the kind of blurs and glows and sort of lens distortion effects that will tie the image together. So the first thing I'm gonna do 
is add a lens distortion to everything. And we're gonna give this just a tiny bit of dispersion um, and no distortion for the time being. I find just a bit of dispersion, you don't wanna go overboard with this, but just a tiny bit can help kind of seat um, your render into the image a bit more. So then we're going to add a glare node and I'm just gonna set this to fog glow and we're gonna bring the size down um, and this is just, just gonna sort of soften everything up a little bit. And there we go. You can see without and with, and I'm just gonna bring the threshold up to say three. Next, we are gonna add some streaks. And for this, I'm gonna bring the threshold. I'm gonna keep the threshold at about two um, and what we want are some just kind of two horizontal kind of anamorphic style streaks. I'm bringing the color modulation up and the fade up and uh, that should give us quite a nice effect. So this is sort of like the very brightest parts of the image um, hitting the camera sensor and sort of streaking horizontally. After that, I'm gonna add another streak and we're gonna set this to six and just give it kind of a random angle. In fact, it's sort of a slightly off angle works quite nicely for this. Bring up the amount of color modulation and uh, bring the fade down. And this is gonna give sort of a, an almost kind of sparkly effect to the brightest point. And it's not really hitting as much as I'd like it to. So I'm just gonna bring this initial value down to say 1.5, the threshold value, and that should hopefully boost up everything. Um, yeah, there we go. So you can see it coming in here and here and down here where it's catching the light. Um, finally, I'm gonna add another fog glow, but we're gonna make this large and we're gonna set it to a very low threshold. Now this is gonna completely blow out everything. Um, yeah, like that. But what we're gonna do is use a mix node to just mix between it and the image before. And I'm gonna set that down to say 0.2 and that's gonna um, just give us quite a nice subtle kind of glow. And the last thing we'll do is another lens distortion node, but this time we will give it just a touch of distortion as well. And I'm gonna hit fit. And that's gonna just subtly bend everything so that we don't get any kind of perfectly straight edges. Cause you don't get that from a camera lens. It will inevitably distort everything slightly. So if we can replicate that in our render, that kind of subtly um, makes it feel a little more real. Um, and then in color management, I'm just gonna set this say to high contrast and we can play with the gamma, play with the exposure. And that's working quite nicely. What I am going to do is grab that hue saturation node and just plug it in after the sunbeams uh, and bump the saturation up just to exaggerate this kind of prism kind of effects that we've got going on. I'm also going to bring the lens distortion down on uh, the shards. And I think that is looking pretty good. We are almost there. All I'm gonna do is just go back into our actual uh, render layers and just tweak a few things. So if I just temporarily show the core again, I'm just gonna make this a bit smaller. So I'm gonna grab both of these and just scale it in a little, just cause I think we've got a bit too much glow coming off and uh, hide the core again. In out of the shards, what I'm gonna do is we need to animate these now. So now we wanna add a little bit of animation to these shards. So I'm just gonna to go to frame zero, add a keyframe, frame 250, and I'm just gonna animate these subtly. And if we go down here, we can just select everything and give them a vector interpolation. And then we'll just get like a nice, slow, uh, constant rotation. I'm gonna do this with all of these. And if we hit play, we've got everything moving because we've got all these different layers. Everything's moving, everything. You can't really tell that um, it's just being done with rotation. And the only other thing I'm gonna do is I am just going to add an empty. Call this shards group one. 
and we're going to parent everything to it. And then I can select all aside from the camera and we'll just duplicate it. Group two. And this way we can duplicate, scale, rotate everything without um, having to redo those keyframes. So now we've got sort of twice the density of shards and I, I think that's looking, that's going to look quite nice. So um, I'm just going to render once again and we'll see how it turns out. So that's going to about do it for today. Um, you can see the, the results quite nice already for fairly little work. Uh, the only other thing I did in my uh, recreation previously is I added some light leak elements uh, that I found free online um, to the scene just using a, another ad node and uh, that just helped tie everything together and uh, create the effects that this kind of really bright glowing object is um, having an effect on the optics of the camera which always helps to just kind of tie everything together um, and you can just keep tweaking this as much as you want tweaking the colors tweaking the size of different elements tweaking the number of shards a uh, number of particles and, and anything in this compositing setup to um, get a result that uh, fits the scene and fits the background and fits the kind of look that you're going for um, so i hope you found that useful and um, hope you'll stick around for more videos in the future